The Doctor Who, our Hamburg podcast. Real Doctor Who fans with real Doctor Who opinions. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Doctor Number podcast, your go-to for all your Doctor Who needs. From classic era to new, to big finish and beyond. I'm your host, Brett, the host with the most, ready to dive into yet again another fascinating and interesting discussion. Today, we're going to be talking about a bit of a shakeup in the Doctor Who streaming world as two classic Doctor Who episodes have been removed from the BBC iPlayer, leaving fans wondering what this means for the future of the series. So we'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well as many others. Email the show at alambraaudio at gmail.com. You can tweet the show at Alambra Podcast. DMs are open. So with that being said, sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea, and let's dive into what this means for the future of the streaming Doctor Who universe. So um, I, as I was struggling to figure out what to do a podcast on, I was scrolling through Twitter, you know, doom scrolling, as one would say, on the world's toilet walls, and I saw that there was a discussion about the impact of losing two of the classic era titles from Doctor Who. Now, first, being this being said, I will tell you this is why, and so many people on the um, on Twitter were basically saying this is why you buy physical media; they cannot delete it from your library. So, again, I am getting ready to purge some of the things that I have duplicate of, and. Well, the Terror of the Zygons is something I have duplicate of, and so maybe, maybe not. Maybe not purging that sucker. Maybe I'll have two copies of it. Maybe I'll have three. Who's to say how many is the right number to own of Terror of the Zygons? But I saw, anyway, that being said, there is probably one is enough. But I saw that there was a discussion about two of Tom Baker's stories being removed from the BBC iPlayer. Now, this is not the first time this has happened. I believe uh, there is some disputes regarding an unearthly child. The I'm not sure if it's just the, the third, fourth, fifth, or th- second, third, fourth episode of an unearthly child, or if it's all four of them. Either way, I own that also. So hashtag not a problem. Uh, I saw it linked to an article on um where am i radio times so the article is said doctor who removes two classic tom baker stories from bbc iplayer and this is written uh friday the first of november 2024 and it says that two classic doctor who serials have been removed from the bbc iplayer series season 13 is stories terror of the zygons and the seeds of doom are now both absent from the fa- the iplayer after fans noticing an expiration date of Friday, no, 1st of November, on both series. The BBC told RadioTimes.com in a statement that the Hooniverse contains over 800 hours of Doctor Who content. Okay, so right now the BBC is trying to, you know, sugarcoat the loss of two classic stories and are trying to be like, hey, you know what, there's thousands of hours of, uh, and I again overgeneralize, thousands of hours for you to, you know, to enjoy. Why are you squabbling or complaining or worried about, you know, at the grand scheme of things, maybe four hours? And I will say, I understand that. However, Terra the Zygons, probably one of the more, I, I, when I bought DVDs, when they were first coming out, that was one of the last few of Tom Baker's to be released was Terra the Zygons. And uh, Seeds of Doom, was that, is that a special edition? I, I can't remember if it's a special edition. I don't currently have that one up on my wall. I have the Blu-rays now because, again, I just started replacing stuff with Blu-rays and was thinking about double dipping and keeping both DVDs and Blu-rays. Then, you know, room became an issue, and so I was going to purge all the DVDs. But now with this, it's just like, hmm, two is better than none. Maybe two is better than one. But uh, yeah, so the BBC is trying to sugarcoat this in this statement. It says the stories were released in 1975 and 1976, respectively, and starred Tom Baker as the fourth doctor alongside Elizabeth Slayton as companion Sarah Jane Smith. Both of them were written by Robert Banks Stewart and directed by Douglas Camfield. It says last year, as part of the Doctor Who's 60th anniversary celebrations, BBC announced more than 800 episodes of the show 
That's weird. So why did they choose? Why did why did Radio Times decide to use eight hundred? Or so. Well, I guess the quote is the BBC says that there's over eight hundred hours of content and there's more than eight hundred episodes because some of the episodes are a half hour in length. All right. Anyway, I'm getting bogged down by you know words because you know they matter. <clears throat> anyway, so it says 800 episodes of the show from across the classic and modern runs would live on iPlayer, something that showrunner Russell T. Davies has made clear was a big ambition of his. And then it says various spinoffs have also returned, such as Sarah Jane Smith, Torchwood, Class. Uh, uh, do we really cl count Class? If it's not watched by really anybody, does it actually exist? It's kind of like that whole tree in the forest type of a situation. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Doctor Who Confidential. However, there are a few notable absences, most prominently the first ever serial. Okay, so it is a serial. An Unearthly Child, which kicked off Doctor Who and saw William Hartnell's first appear. Ooh, oh, oh. First appearance as the first Doctor. Okay. All right. So, according to this article, well, William Hartnell is the first doctor. Okay. All the stuff that we saw with the Timeless Child uh, series 12 episode is now debunked. Thank you, Radio Times. Appreciate it. Um, more recently, the modern episode Fear Her, which featured a brief cameo of Hugh Edwards, was removed. However, BBC, however, RadioTimes.com understands the episode will be redubbed, own the original, and reinstated on the BBC iPlayer. Doctor Who is set to return this Christmas, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, all right. So I decided to do a couple things to figure out what the heck was going on. Uh, and so I typed in on Google, what is wrong with Doctor Who Terror of the Zygons? Because I was curious what, if anything, was actually an issue. So it says, some say Doctor Who's Terror of the Zygons is formulaic, while others criticize the use of glove puppets for the Loch Ness Monster. And so when I saw that, I was like, okay, thank you, Google's AI, for giving me a brief overview of what some fans have been complaining about regarding Terror of the Zygons, even though it is probably held in high standards and esteems by, you know, the Doctor Who fan club, of which I am a card-carrying member of. And we'll also take your card away from you should you disagree with me, because that's how I roll. Um, uh, then I typed into Google, what is wrong with Doctor Who Seeds of Doom? And so the AI overview says the Seeds of Doom episodes of Doctor Who was criticized for its violent content and inclusion of a Maltov cocktail. Mary Whitehouse of the National Viewers and Listeners Association wrote that the episode included strangulation by hand, by claw, and obscene vegetable matter. <laughs> um, ah, that was funny. Um, showed children how to make Molotov cocktails. Yes, I remember that well. Tom Baker turned to the camera and said, Hello, kids. This is how you make a Molotov cocktail just for the... Uh, this is the kitty version. Uh, anyway. Um, and then it says, uh, further down in another one, it says, Seeds of Doom was one of the Doctor Who serials which drew criticism from Mary Whitehouse's viol violent imagery. She wrote strangulation by hand claw and obscene vegetable manner. What is an obscene vegetable manner? Like, is that like, you know, a zucchini that looks like a wang or something like that? Like, that would be obscene ve vegetable manner if you ask me. But uh, actually, I know exactly. <laughs> Seen vegetable manner. It looked like a wing. They, they, they were struggled by a, something that looked like a wing. So as I did my research on this whole thing, and which could be easily blown out of proportion, I looked and found some people discussing this on Reddit. And so it all makes sense because stuff like this has happened before. And currently, the last time it happened revolved around big finishes, the Zygon who fell to Earth, 
as well as what was the other one? There was like three of them. I think it was Foe from the Future, the Zygon to Fell to Earth, and then was it the next one in the season two of The Eighth Doctor? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the one that was written by uh, The Eighth Doctor's Paul Martz, it's now back up line. They never made a big deal of it returning. I remember it was a huge deal that it was had been pulled off and was no longer available to buy, which was funny because I was about ready to buy it physically at the time when rumors of it being pulled off, and then I didn't, and then I hit refresh about a couple hours later, and people had already beaten me to what I was planning on doing, which was buying it, sitting on it like Liam does, putting it up in my attic so that it accrues uh, money and then sell it for much more money. But uh, yeah, never did that. Anyway, so I looked and found on Reddit, and there is a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this. It says, so as of today, both stories have been removed. It, is there any particular reason why? I know both stories were written by Robert Bank Stewart. So did the, so did the estate withdraw the rights or something? And again, somebody replied saying Big Finish had issues with his estate before. It'll be resolved in time. And another commenter came and said, well, Big Finish just announced a Zygon box set. I sure hope things are, you know, resolved. And I think it's funny that, you know, well, also as of today, as of the day of recording, they just barely announced that the second Dr. Patrick Trout, or as not Patrick Troughton, but the second Doctor will feature in the what, Century of a Zygon or something like that, whatever it's called, that I was really excited for. And now am, I will tell you, you know, I, I don't mean to get, you know, sidetracked or whatnot, but slightly annoyed now that there's going to be doctors in here. I just, just leave the doctors out of this whole Zygon thing. Let leave them out of the uh crinoid thing let's just have it be doctor free maybe and then you know maybe we could have them run into the uh dalek empire daleks or the cybermen cyber whatever i would love for them to expand on this and be in the doctor who world without doctor who or the doctor being in there i don't know that's just me so um basically there is, from what I gather, and so I also did the same thing for um, that. So here's what it said. Uh, actually, so sorry. This was the original discussion that featured uh, the Robert Banks Stewart estate issues. So it says, uh, you know, he was the creator of the, the Zygons and the Crinoids, and have been, these stories have been pulled off Big Finish's website. So this is, according to Reddit, two years ago. It says, Seemingly initially noticed by this Twitter user, several audio fe feature feature uh, audios featuring materials from classic series writers uh, Robert Bank Bank Stewart are no longer available for sale on Big Finish's website. This includes the stories featuring the Zygons, the Zygon to fell to Earth, Zygon. Nobody cared about that one. Let's see, Chronoids, a hot house, and also the four do fourth Doctor Lost Stories box set where one of them was an adaption of Robert Bank Stewart's script. Curiously, this person said, Death and Blackpool remains listed for sale despite also including the Zygons. Presumably, this is a rights issue with anything from Robert Bank Stewart would be an awfully big coincidence otherwise, but does, not, but does anybody have any more clue as to what is going on? It is likely that this is going to be resolved. We're not sure when or if there at serious risk of these stories may simply never be available again going forward. That's quite worrying prospect, especially given how pivotal some of these stories are to the Lucy Miller arc. So that was according to this Reddit two years ago or two ish years ago. And so it just sounds like that this whole uh, loss of these two stories, the uh, I already forgot what the second one was. The Seeds of Doom. I always want to say Seeds of Death. I don't know why, but I always do. 
So this is obviously the Seeds of Doom and also the Terror of the Zygons. And I think probably similarly to how Big Finish got the Zygon to fell to Earth, as well as Zygon Hunt, because as I look back through this, both of the, oh, Zygon Century, that's what it's called. Um, Zygon Hunt is also back for sale. You can get the download. Nobody wants it. And you could also buy the, oh, you cannot buy the CD. It doesn't matter. Nobody really wants it. So, okay. I, I, I took those shots. Now I'm going to just go to the time scales and I'm just going to see which one is the best Zygon story. So I'm just going to type in Zygon because I, you know, you, you take some funny cheap shots from here and there from time to time. And then you have to just really back up what come on website i believe in you you can do hard things all right so here is the site i'm just going to so the zygon that fell to earth that has an average rating of 7.9 good for them oh man that sucks i hate that it, you know you can't go back and you have to constantly Oh, wait. Anyway, that being said, I'm uh, probably just going to conclude the podcast right there. Okay, never mind. Um, Let's see. Oh, okay, I made fun of Zygon Hunt. What did they, Zygon Hunt get? Zygon got, Hunt got a 7.0. Okay, maybe me and Liam just didn't like it. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with people having differing opinions. I will not take your Doctor Who fan card away. That's what the bouncer's for. That's what Legion's for. He's our Doctor Who Club bouncer. He's doing a good job. Anyway, that being said, I think I'm going to conclude this podcast. I think it was interesting. I'm not sure, again, how much of a re-listen value some of these podcasts are. But uh, please email the show, tweet the show, DM the show uh, at alambraaudio at gmail.com. You could tweet the show at alambrapodcast. DMs are open. And I guess what I should do before I conclude is just double check the email to make sure that I have no email waiting to response. My wife could have died today. Oh, that's a, a Reddit post that it wants me to read. Yeah, um, mine was just perfectly fine. Just cold because it got cold here. Let's see. All right. Yep. Well, that being said, we, I will um, conclude this podcast. Email the show tweet the show, DM the show, and until next time, I will see you in time. You have been listening to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast. Doctor Who is owned and trademarked by the BBC. Doctor Who Alhambra is not affiliated with the BBC or Big Finish. No infringement is intended. Visit our website at alhambrapodcast.weebly.com or email the show at alambraaudio at gmail.com Tweet us at Alambra Podcast. That is A-L-H-A-M-B-R-A Podcast Thank you